All right, they're going to take up the offering, and I'm going to use what little time we have left here this morning to encourage you from the Word. So if you'll turn to Hebrews chapter 10, I want to close up this sermon series that we've been on, um, this journey we've been on, discovering what church is about, uh, how, how we fit into the church, what our responsibilities are, and I'm going to finish that up with you guys um, with you guys today. We've learned that the church is, a, is really just a group of believers in Jesus Christ who've committed themselves to Him and committed themselves to be together for fellowship, discipleship, worship, and prayer, and who have joined with Him in carrying out His mission of the redemption of the world. This is very important. We have to understand what we are so that we can see our role in it, and that's exactly what we are. We talked about our ability to thrive together not just exist or just to make it, but to thrive, to be successful. We saw the early church was successful in a few things. Uh, they were successful in what I just described to you, uh, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and prayer, and God affirmed that that is exactly what they were supposed to be doing by performing miracles, signs, and wonders, and we know that today God affirms what we're doing we looked at Psalm 133 and saw that unity is refreshing to us and it is soothing to us. We looked at Ephesians chapter 4 and saw that the church is a, a place where we can be equipped and trained by others who are a little bit further along in their uh, spiritual maturity. We saw that in John 17, being together is actually evidence and proof to the world that there is a God and that His mission is very real. We looked at 1 Peter chapter 3 and saw that to collectively we can bless others, we can uh, receive blessing from others, and God initiates all of that. We looked at this idea that we we can be better together. If we work together, there are greater rewards for our toil. If we walk together, we can help each other up. If we go through life together, we can meet each other's needs. If we fight the, the fight of faith together, then we can help protect one another. And if we just live and live out our faith together, we can actually be stronger. We looked at that in the scriptures too. Last week we talked about commitment and why that is so important. A commitment is important because of, of the, the absolute level of expectations that God has placed on the church. We are plan A in carrying out His mission. And so this, the expectations are very high. We're expected to bear with each other's burdens. We're expected to operate as one body. We are expected to use our gifts for one goal. We're expected to become spiritually mature, not to our level or our defined level, but to the full level of the maturity of Christ. We, so we know that we are expected to spiritually mature together and we are expected to work together to carry out the mission. That's why we have this uh, idea of, God, of being the body of Christ. We work together. Some are the feet, some are the arms, some are, are uh, different parts of the body, but we all have to work together. That's an expectation. We ended up last week talking about just five reasons why being a part of a local church, an actual committed member of a local church is beneficial. Okay? And we, we landed on that it's because it's very important to Jesus, it should be important to us. Jesus died for the church, so the church is a big deal. It's not just uh, any, any organization. Someone died. God died for the church. It's important to Him. We know that the church leaders are called and held accountable for pouring into our souls. So you can trust going to a church that teaches the Bible because its leaders will take seriously the responsibility to pour God's Word into you, which is why our life group leaders and our deacons and our pastors take very, very seriously this idea of instilling the principles of God's Word into you. It's a great benefit of joining the church. The church is where you learn to love God and love people. It's where you learn to make disciples. Where else in the world are you going to learn that? Who else is teaching that and heralding that and pushing that? Nobody else but the church is doing that. And then, of course, the Bible specifically says to serve in the church. In 1 Peter chapter 4, use your gifts in the church. So those are good reasons why. I want to finish up today with talking a little bit about church membership and then bring that all to a conclusion at the end. 
So in Hebrews chapter 10, we're going to start with verse 19. We're going to go through several verses. We'll pause along the way and and discuss what this means. And, And we're going to pause very quickly in verse 19. Therefore, brothers, already we're pausing. Brothers, he's... He's not just throwing that out as a spiritual um, language. He's very intentional in using this language. He calls them brothers because God does expect us to operate as a family. That's why he uses language at our salvation that we've been adopted into the, the family of God. 2 Corinthians 6, 19, I will be a father to you. You will be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord God Almighty. Romans 8, 14 and following, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you will live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption as sonship. That's why you can cry, Abba, Father. And then he says that great verse, the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit, that we are the children of God. If you belong to Christ, you are my brothers and my sisters, and I am your brother. We are family, and every family has rules. In our family, one of the big rules for our family on Sundays, you're going to think it's silly, but it's a big rule, no popsicles allowed in the toy room. We go through about 200 popsicles a month in our family on Sundays. They're constantly getting those, and we found popsicle juice all over the carpet, all over the toys, all over the walls, all over the kids, everywhere. So now, no popsicles are allowed on Sundays. Kids will look at that as joy-crushing rules or guidelines. I'm not actually in the toy room. I'm kind of at the edge, leaning in, and so they'll, look, they'll use that as sort of guidelines instead of rules. Rules are important. Family rules are important. That's why our church adopted a covenant four years ago that we tried to live by. That covenant, every member here, you remember, you read it. It's in our bylaws. It's it's, uh, it's thing that we have agreed to live by because there are family rules. And so when we know that we're included in God's family, members have to be committed to live according to the rules of the family. That's just... That's just a given. We don't go rogue. We don't cause uh, the reputation of the family to to, um, be harmed. We don't do things to divide each other. We live by a, a, a simple set of responsibilities and expectations of rules, and it's laid out in our covenant. And that's because we're family. Every family has to have some of those rules. Second thing, if you continue reading in 19 through 21, it talks about who affords this privilege of being in a family. Who's, who presides over this family? Follow along. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he has opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest who over the house of God let us draw near. So that tells us who affords this privilege. There's a privilege that is afforded and presided over, and that is by Christ. Christ is the head of the church. He's the ultimate authority in the church. There's no, re- there's, there's, there's no doubt when he, he throws out the body analogy that Christ is the head and we are the body. The head tells us what to do, gives us directions, tells us how to respond, tells us what to say, what to see, where to go, how to live. The body, the, the head is in total control. It's the same in the church. Christ is in control. What he says go, uh, goes. Where he, where he says we go, what he says we do, we do. He is in control because he afforded it in the the first place. He died for the church. When he died, the curtain was ripped in two. We can come into the Holy of Holies. We can come right before God. Christ is our high priest. We confess our sins to him. He afforded it, so he presides over it. Members should be committed to submit to him. We have to submit to Jesus. What he says goes. That's a part of being his family. Members should also be committed to those who he left in charge, which is why together we decide 
who God has placed in charge of us. We don't hire anybody without, without um, doing that together. We don't hire pastors without doing that together. We don't elect deacons without doing that together. We don't elect church council without doing that together. We decide that because we believe God has ordained and used them And so we should be committed to those who he's left in charge. It's not always easy being in charge, by the way. Yesterday, I was left in charge for about 45 minutes while my wife went to the grocery store. We've had a four-year-old stay with us for a week. And I'm pretty tired, I want to tell you. But she said, I'm going to the grocery store. Big boy, you're in charge of the four-year-old. It did not go so well. Four bowls of ice cream and three popsicles in the toy room later, we knew who was in charge. He was definitely in charge. But someone has to be in charge. Someone's got to be responsible. So if the wife came home and found popsicle juice, it's not the four-year-old's fault. It's the one who was in charge. We've got to submit to those who are in charge. I want to tell you there have been times when I've been caught on the carpet in front of the body of deacons and they said, you need to do this in this way, you need to do this in a better way. Because we practice mutual submission, I say, okay, I'll I'll do that. I will do that. And there have been times when I've had to call the deacons to the carpet too and say, men, we have to do this better. Because we practice mutual submission, they say, okay, pastor, we'll, we'll do that better. We have to be committed to those whom he's left in charge. That's a part of being what he afforded the church. Look at verse 22 and 23. It's going to talk about a communal effort to stay close to God. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Did you notice the communal language that he's using so far in this passage? Us, our, we. Been preaching to the football team for a month now that no man is an island. Everything you do affects someone else. It's the same in the church. We're not islands. We're meant to do this together. There's a communal effort to stay close to God, which is in our list of expectations. This is a collective focus. So members should be committed to help each other live right. Not just come and be fed, but to come and help each other be fed, help each other live out the commands of Christ and do these things rightly. I am dependent upon your accountability on my life and you should feel the same for me. This is a part of the communal effort to stay close to God. That's why we're committed to help support the church's ministries too. Members, that's our responsibility. This is a community. This is a family. It's an effort, a collective effort. And so we must do this. And I want to commend you, longtime members who've been givers for a long time. You fill up those mission boxes every time there's a trip. You're making things. You're, you're meeting together to make things and pray you're, you're coming up here and doing small projects at the church and you're, you're putting money in the offering plate and you're patting me on the back and giving me some encouragement too. You've been doing that for a long time. Way to go. Keep it up. And there's others of us who are just learning this. We're just starting this. We're, we can't give a full tithe yet. We're, we're, just get, we're getting there. There's some of us who can't afford to put things in the offering plate or things in the mission boxes, but we can do little things and and we, we participate and we're learning to do that. Let's be patient with one another until we've all reached the maturity level of Christ. We do this together because we need to stay close to God and he intends for us to do that together. Look at verse 24 and 25. 
And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as as a habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. This is... This talks about church being the the betterment of all believers. Members should be committed to worship and fellowship. Should be committed to discipleship and prayer because it makes us makes us better. Us better. We should be committed to those things. We should be committed to give and receive service and, and encouragement. I send out an email every week to our ministry leaders, to our deacons, to our life group leaders. Every week on that list are are a list of of people, some in the hospital, some who've lost loved ones, some who are, um, they're widows, or they're single ladies. And and I know they're in in a need that week, and I send that out. And many of you are responding to that, and you're doing that. We've got to do better. We've got to do that more, because that's what God's called us to do. We're committed to give and receive service and spiritual encouragement. We're not doing that just for people's knowledge. We're doing that so things can happen. We have to do that. The church is for the betterment of all believers. So to add to the list of why join a local church that we started last week. Yeah, we joined the church because it's important to Jesus. And we joined because we're committed to His cause. To His cause. That's why we joined the church. It's a great benefit to us to be committed to His cause. And yeah, the church is where leaders pour into our souls, but it operates like a family. We pour into each other and we live according to the guidelines so that we will not be divisive and we will not embarrass the name of Christ or the name of His church. Yeah, the church is where you learn to love God and love people. And that involves helping one another stay closer to God. This week, someone sitting around you may be having a, uh, some kind of medical procedure or some kind of big court date, big pressure at the job, and you know about it, it's your responsibility to make the call. Hey, I'm praying for you today. Send the text. I'm praying for you today. I know it's a tough day for you. I am with you today. That's a huge benefit of being in the church. Yeah, the church is where you learn to make disciples, but it's also a place where we're all being made better. All disciples are being made better. The church is a specified place to serve in the scriptures. And Acts tells us very clearly that that's worship and fellowship and discipleship and prayer. But we know from today that that's a communal effort. It takes more than the pastor, more than the deacons, more than the life groups. It's a communal effort to give and receive service and encouragement. And all of us can do that. All of us us can do that. Will you commit to doing that? We want the church to be all it can be. We want the church to be used for the redemption of 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 mankind. We want the church to continue sending our training and sending and growing and receiving. We want the church to continue doing those things, right? Well, look at it in this light. Look at it in this light of scriptures. It's a benefit to be a part of the church. It's a responsibility to be a part of the church. It's a joy to be a part of the church. Now, Pastor Greg's course that's offered just almost every other month is wonderful. Um, He goes in a lot more in depth than than I have today. I, I encourage you, take that course, even if you've been here a while. Take the course. Find out what it means to be a church member and to be active in those things. Or if you're looking for a church that is intentionally moving in a direction of, of winning the world, changing the world, you're in the right place. That is our goal. Loving God so much, loving people so much, making so many disciples that we're actually altering destiny. 
and the future of Clover. Take that class. Find out how we're doing it. And join in on us in that. During this song, I'm going to ask you to pray and just, just seek out. If you're doing your part, just ask God, am, am I doing a good job? Am I doing my part? And if, and if you feel his spirit telling you, no, you could do so much more, have the boldness to say, okay, God, what is it? What, what, what can I do? What is it? And follow his lead. He's going to tell you, just follow his lead. There'll be some guys on the corners of the stage, Greg and Tommy, and, and they're there for a couple of reasons, to pray with you, to encourage you, to stand with you about anything that's going on in your life. But they can also tell you how to have a relationship with Christ. They can tell you have a, a, how to have a, a closer relationship with the church, and it's going to start with that next steps class with Greg. I encourage you, follow through on those things. It's a great benefit in doing that. You'll be blessed for it. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you that you have caused us to hear the message very clearly today. You, you will use us and you will, you will increase the sphere of influence of your church if we are committed to you. You said that those plans that are committed to you will succeed and we're committing this plan to you. We want to love you. We want to love each other. We want to make disciples and, and we just need the push. Father, just push us in that direction and challenge our hearts like you've done over the last four weeks in this series. And Father, whatever you choose to do in us, we're going to revel that you're using us. Just be so excited that you're using us. We get to join with you. God, I ask that you would call some here to give themselves to you. You would call some here to give themselves to your church or to give themselves deeper. Father, I ask that you will, you will impress upon us exactly what you want us to do. Thank you, God. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.